and welcome to the best fucking podcast in the world. I'm JD. Unfortunately, Lloyd can't be with us here today. Where is he? So I, I got to meet this guy. <laughs> so in his place, we've got none other than Josh WRB. Hey, how's it going, guys? I am happy to be here, man. It's Very awesome. It's, it's great to have you here. I've been watching this round table and these poker chips. I wanted to see it from this perspective because I've seen so many freaking episodes from the other side. Yeah. This is sweet. I yeah. love this. Episode. I always feel like the poker chips are a lost opportunity for advertising. Like I should put the load in yes, JD seriously. logos there, but I, I've tried so many times to concoct it and it's just cutting a circle that dude, a sticker would do. Yeah. Oh, I know a sticker would do, but it's getting that sticker made. That's always kind of thing. But you know, it, it, it's funny how it evolved. Cause we used to have the three cameras and stuff. And then we decided to go with the little tiny yeah, yeah. GoPro and we've kind of stuck with that. It's a weird perspective and it's <laughs> maybe not the best video quality in the world, but, uh, Hey, you know, it's, it's a podcast. It's man. a podcast. It's more about the audio and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. So, I mean, people may, may know you already from YouTube. They may know you already from Twitch. They, you know, they may have watched know. your stuff, but just in case they don't know, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, right now I'm just playing Fortnite all the freaking time. My, my, like my channel is my short films and, uh, like movie reviews. That's what like I've been doing on YouTube and recording for online, whatever, for like 10, 12 years. But it's gaming right now. I'm just been like obsessed with growing my Twitch community and yeah, it's, it's with Fortnite. I don't know. Like everyone, everyone in the world, it seems is playing this game. So I thought, Hey, let's, let's might as well fun. jump on yeah. board and do it. But I mean, you're still obviously doing other stuff. Like I, I, I watch your well, family vlogs, vlogs yeah. and uh, you know, I watch your, well, we go to the movies together and watch the movies. You do a review and I, I can't articulate what I think of a movie other than making fun of it. So <laughs> That's sort of where that goes. But you also do short films as well. You've done short yeah. films in the past. and Every once in a while. Like, that's the thing. Like, I, I want to do more often, but I feel, I don't know. I just don't have the headspace sometimes to get it done for some reason. It's hard sometimes, I think. I think it's hard sometimes as a creator to be creating all the time. And sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know, especially when it's something that you want to be a, a little bit bigger, sometimes it's hard to take that step to make it happen. Well, we're doing like we I like to live in the horror genre, but I did like Irrational Fears Volume One and I had this like big ambitious idea to have it be like a twelve part series and like I had three ideas right off the bat and then it just like ended at one. But I'm I've already put it out to my wife. We're gonna make the second one probably within the next few weeks here. So yeah. I'm super I'm getting more excited about like creating other things on YouTube now. I feel like I have more time to do it as well. Yeah. So I think that's a, a good way to always look at things as a creative though. Like you have the ambition for a, obviously a 12 part series, you do <laughs> yeah. one, you stop, but you know, it's, you're coming back to it. I think sometimes what happens is what you find, even in film and all those kind of things, when you have great success in something that a lot of times the other parts are forced. Yeah. And I think you lose something when that happens. And, and I think, you know, being a creative and, and having that part and then working on the next part when you feel the time is right is a much better way to do your process. Well, and the thing that like always re-sparked me every year is like me and the boys that used to make all the short films together, it was always for the like cuff 48 hour film challenge and right. then they stopped uh, promoting it. Yeah. And then it went to the Calgary Expo and we did it the first year that they were the people putting it on and it wasn't a good experience anymore. So the film festival went from cuff to now it's an expo thing. Yeah, now it's ah, attached to okay. the expo. So it's like completely thrown off to the side because the expo is all about the celebrities going and all that stuff. Yeah. So it's it's just kind of like this pimple on the side of the big expo. It seems because y you're not seeing your films in a movie theater anymore. It's at like hall whatever. Yeah. With like a little and I'm like oh, this isn't the same experience anymore. Right. And, and, and I find they do a, a poor job of promoting all that stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean. Uh, Anybody who's watching this knows that myself and Lloyd have been at the expo and myself, I've been in the expo for a long, yeah, yeah, yeah. long time. And everybody that has, you know, watched the, after the last expo know that I'm not going anymore. And, you know, I've kind of cut that off the list because I feel a lot of times like what you're saying is they've sort of pushed everybody yeah. to the sides. It's all about 
you know, the celebrity panels, people will drop, you know, 175, oh, yeah. $275, you know, plus to watch a panel on, you know, back to the future or well, yeah. aliens or whatever. And then all these other things are just kind of like, well, if I happen to go and if it costs anything, especially on top of that, they're definitely, you know, Oh, it's $5 to get in. No, I can't do that. I know. Right. Well, anything local, like I saw this meme, uh, yesterday about like, uh, Oh, Jay Z just dropped a new whatever. It's like I'm gonna drop two hundred dollars. This is a new perfume from this celebrity. I'll drop five hundred dollars. Uh, your friend down the street just started a local whatever. It's like oh, I don't really have the money to help you out there. It's yeah, like, yeah, you gotta help help out local rather than you know the yeah. same thing. Right? But people want to be associated with success. Yeah, right. I, I think that's that's part of it. They want to be seen as like, hey, I'm part of the cutting edge of things. This is the cutting edge. The you know, this is this. I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm hip, I'm all that kind of stuff. I know that whatever Khloe Kardashian has just released this <laughs> and I own it. I'm none of the yeah, first people, guess, right? Yeah. They sort of want to be on that like edge, you know, but nobody success. wants to support the underdog because they're like, you know, if you fail, they don't want to be associated, associated with, with failure and all those kind of things. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of a messed up kind of reality of it because I, I do agree, you know, dropping two hundred and seventy five dollars on whatever for a celebrity that has millions and millions of dollars and you're unwilling to buy a, a good product from a friend for five bucks because, you know, he's just starting out. It's, it's kind of a weird, weird thing, you know, and, it, and it's always funny because you see people, you know, when they gain success, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, they don't gain that popularity in their own backyard until they're successful. Yeah, and then yeah. everybody like jumps on. It's like, hey, oh, I was, I've supported them well, from the beginning. That, and that's not necessarily it happens with the bands truth. all the time. And too. that's and that's where it's yeah. coming from. Yeah. yeah. For me. I, I mean, I, I see it all the time. Guys will start and it's like, oh, yeah, these guys are awesome. I love them. I've gone to all their shows. And it's like, I, like I, I don't think so, out. because I went to the shows and I never saw you there. And there wasn't a ton of people there. But now that they've made it, everybody kind of wants to jump. My on stepdad telling me a story about uh, like back in the day because he's from Ontario. Well, he's where is he from? He's like Hamilton. Or yeah. Something. yeah, Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, he's like, oh, you got to come and see this band that's playing. And it was Rush. Yeah. And no one like this is back when he went to a bar. There was like 12 people there. Right. And there's no one knew who Rush was. And he's like, this is the best band ever. And yeah. then they're Rush. Right. Yeah. Like so crazy to think of. Well, anyone not knowing who Rush is nowadays, whatever, right? right? Because right. they're just they're Canada rock. You know, yeah, yeah, they're gods, definitely guess, no. you know rock, rock icons, yeah. right? I mean, you, I, I saw stuff similar with the Tragically Hip, right? I mean, Tragically yeah. Hip, you know, especially now have gained so much momentum, and it was kind of weird at the end for me because it was like I felt like a lot of people were just being there oh, to yeah, be sort of part sure. of that Whoa. thing, and, and I, but it I was, mean, I it brought Gord. a whole country together. Essentially. It did, it did. I mean, uh, you know, Gord. You know, he's, he's fantastic. The band is fantastic. But, you know, it was kind of like... It's yeah. Like, eh, yeah. You well, know, there's like, a lot of bandwagon jokes, you know, for sure. But, like, whatever. Yeah. It, it was all positive. The, the good thing at the end of that is Gord got his message out. And, you know, he was able to... Oh, you know, yeah. He had, the, he had the audience captivated and he did some fantastic CBC did a stuff. good job of, like... Oh, yeah. The documentary was, was phenomenal. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, but it's, it's just kind of interesting how that kind of stuff sort of evolves, right? I mean, you know, it's, uh, again, you know, people, uh, they want to be part of a success or part of a thing. And, you know, when, when something's not garnering that attention, it's kind of like, well, you know, they're a little standoffish, right? Well, that's what I want to try and do with the YouTube Calgary community is bring us all together on like a project, whatever it may be, yeah. and have us all, I don't know, like... If we can all, not just a meetup, but an actual like thought out short film, something fun. I don't know, like not, not even a short film, but just like a skit of some sort or just something where we actually have to come together yeah. to create it. I think that would really, I don't know. I think it would bring the community together a lot more and then, or split it up. So like parts of the video were only on other people's channels. So it right. like. You know, so do something that's like episodic, but it's like you have to watch part one here. Yeah, and you yeah. Have to watch so it part really two it, here. it forces everyone to be more. It's a full on collaboration of yeah, you know, the yeah. people in the community, right? Yeah, I, I think a lot of times, you know, collaborations people are fearful that it's just like oh, it's going to be centralized on this, you know, sort of channel, yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, you know, you're not going to get you know the exposure you want, from the exposure it. you want from it, and all those kind of things, which I, I I think is foolish. I think you have to take every opportunity that you have yeah, to yeah. do those things and, you know, do whatever. I mean, step out of your comfort zone, do all those kind of things. I mean, to be honest, everything that I do on YouTube, including this podcast, is something that I am is 
was completely alien to me. I was a <laughs> terrible public speaker. I hated being in front of the camera. I couldn't stream together a sentence without, you know, stammering yeah, through it. Yeah. And and I think, you know, over the past, I think it's been like four years now, I think I've improved a little bit. I hope. I, well, you, you know, get used to it, right? Like people are, well, public speaking for me is still like right. completely separate and different to talking to a little camera or whatever. Yeah. I, like if there was a, an audience here, I think, well, actually, I don't know. Yeah. Just talking to you is like whatever. Yeah, it's 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 different when you're having that conversation and then people are just kind of on watching. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you did a fantastic job at horror, you know, horror con. I mean, you did two panels with with some decent celebrities, right? Yeah. You did PJ Souls, which was extremely so popular. Scared. I know you were nervous, but you, you knocked it out of the park. And I mean, that's what I mean. Like you have to take those things on. You knew that you were not comfortable with doing no, that, but you went all. in there <laughs> and you did it and you came out on top on the other end. And you know, I feel like I'm so happy that the first panel was PJ souls because I was so nervous and she's a freaking pro at doing panels. And I, I saw a bunch of them on YouTube and everything and just saw how like charismatic she was and she yeah. takes charge with it and everything. So like, I didn't have an abundance of questions, but she was popular enough that the audience was really coming to my aid. Yeah. But the second panel, I didn't feel went as smoothly because his answers were so short. Right. And but he opened up it towards oh, yeah. the end, right? Like, I well, mean, when I flubbed up and I openly told the audience and him, like, look what I'm doing now. He yeah. was just like, OK, yeah, we're just he, hanging he relaxed out. And he, he got in the yeah, zone. And he, and he laughed started, at me and he could laugh at this. And he situation. said some interesting things. In that <laughs> he, did, he said he some he stuff did. that, you know, <laughs> I didn't people, upload that one yet. I yeah, totally forgot. If people dive through YouTube and, and take a look, because I think they uploaded the oh, whole right, panels the whole from thing. the horror con. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, he said some interesting stuff, George. I mean, some stuff that some people might not right, be right. too happy I with. know <laughs> oh, man. but you know it's uh, it is funny because he said this doesn't leave the room it's like dude there is a camera <laughs> literally right there filming this entire thing yeah, it was pretty totally. awesome you know oh, <laughs> but yeah I mean it's it's stepping out of your comfort zone and, and doing right. you know all those kind of things and you know but I think that's a lot of like I, I, potentially why a lot of people haven't come to maybe some of the meetups I want to meet everyone that wants to meet us yeah. like I want to try and bring the community together as like a community yeah like I, I feel like it's kind of in spurts right now the interest might not 100% be there like I'm not in there all the time either I want to try and be a little bit better yeah. at that myself I, I right? think so. what hurt the community the most you know it, it was definitely it had some momentum and I used to be on the board and then I, I stepped off because I was doing the digital expo and I didn't want to be promoting something, you know, that, you know, and, and leveraging, you know, a nonprofit against it kind of thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that was my reason for stepping off the board in YouTube Calgary. And I think what happened when, when demonetization hit and a lot of people got hit Ooh, yeah. and I know people that were like uploading on a weekly basis, guys like Dan, the DXT who yeah. you met at the rec room, you know, he was doing weekly uploads and that was kind of the final blow for him. You know, it was kind of like, you know what, like they don't know. I don't think YouTube understands what they're doing to people's yeah. heads yeah. by like just changing stuff without telling anyone and it's so drastic yeah. that it's yeah it's messing people up although lately if you look at the communication they are promoting that they are going to be transparent and more communicative yeah, but there's only so many times you can yeah. say that before you actually have to be transparent <laughs> oh yeah absolutely <laughs> like, I, you know it's it's interesting like i said you know they're an interesting because they're a massive massive machine. oh i know like you can't you know like yes you're one person there's billion people billions of people watching yeah. youtube every single day and it's like okay you you feel really insignificant sometimes when they do stuff like that yeah that's, that's the problem yeah so i think that killed you know that killed a lot of the creativity in the community i think a lot of people just kind of like okay i gotta take a time out i gotta see <laughs> evaluate what i'm doing you know and and take it from there and i think that hurt the community a little bit yeah um you know as well like there there hasn't been i don't think you know the meetups that there were necessarily in the past i mean uh one of the ones that got canceled i mean i impulsively basically said okay we're going to the rec yeah, room now that you know? well i and, was already open for yeah. a meetup that day right and, so. and that's and that's you know kind of how, how i think it worked was because everybody was kind of like i was gonna go to this now i want to do something and it, right. it worked out all right you know i know they have an event coming up uh in august i think they're planning something which is which is good uh you know and, and again you know hopefully people come out and you know yeah i mean well i'm excited for the twitch meetup like that seems like it's set in stone there's a ton of people going so it's like it's something to really look forward to and i've never met like really anyone from the twitch yeah community i didn't know it was that freaking big right yeah yeah 
So that's I'm really interested. Well, in I that. think that's the interesting thing with YouTube and Twitch and any of these communities is that people are so you're so involved in doing what you're doing and you're so used to speaking outwards. You're speaking to a camera that a lot of times you're not necessarily looking outwards. Yeah, and for sure. and it's not easy stuff to find. Like I mean, if you search Calgary YouTuber, no. it's usually not Calgary YouTubers that come up. It's somebody that was big, you know, that came to Calgary. I'm stumbling and randomly upon. Calgary YouTubers yeah. from it just being like put into my feed right, right. and they're not part of the community. And yeah. I'm like, yo, like you're cool, man. Like you're in Calgary. What's up? Like yeah. we have a community. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is you can have a, a massive following. There are some people that uh, have massive followings in Calgary that I had no idea were yeah. from Calgary. Well, exactly. Uh, and, and to be honest, had no idea who they were. That's the kind of weird thing about YouTube. Whatever we kind of stream pockets. what you watch, yeah. you know, you'll know, you know people within that sort of genre. But beyond that, like there can be somebody, you know, that's massive in a completely different genre that yeah. you never well, watch you and you'll watch. never run across them. Well, right? that's the algorithms yeah. keep you kind of in your pocket your, yeah. of the internet of what they you They don't like, want right? you wandering too far no. so you leave, right? So yeah. It's really weird. You know, it's like you never watch a Dr. Pimple Popper thing because uh, then your feed just gets messed what up. What the hell? Where did those come from? I've said, <laughs> screw you so many times in those freaking videos yeah. and they keep coming up. I'm just like, I don't even like seeing the thumbnails, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's bad because somebody will send you an email and be like, hey, look at this, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have people on my email list now that I just like, if you send me something that's a link, it's like, no, I don't open it. It's just, <laughs> you're on the band list. It's yeah, like, a, like, you know, the a chat manual the, band. It's like, no, no, not doing it, all that band. kind of stuff. But you'll click on something. It's like, oh my God, why did you send me that? And then next thing, your YouTube feed is like, hey, you, you like this stuff, eh? It's yeah. like, no, I don't. <laughs> I really don't. But, uh, yeah, it's, 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 you know, entertaining how, you know, it sort of works. It's magic, I guess. And it's very confusing for people as well. Well, we, and like one of the biggest topics of conversation on your daily is always like diving into the analytics and no one really understanding what the hell any of it really means. Yeah. And all that. well, I don't at all. I look at it and go, all I see is all my views going. Bing! Yeah. Like completely down because I'm uploading live content. So it's one person viewing it for an extremely long time. So yeah. my watch time is going insanely high, but anytime I upload an actual video, like I used to get hundreds of views. Now I get like 30 views, 20 yeah. views. I don't understand what's happening or yeah, what. It's, it's very, I, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to, I mean, nobody I think actually knows because, uh, as the CEO of YouTube has said, the algorithm is, uh, you know, its own thing. It kind of, you know, adapts and changes. And so nobody really 100% knows what it's doing necessarily, which isn't necessarily. Yeah, why good. would you do that? Because they want it to be adaptive and learn. And then obviously they have, yeah. you know, some parameters. They want, you know, increased watch time. They want, you know, basically, you know, audience retention. But that retention thing is just and, messing with humans heads yeah 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 i mean the important thing honestly on youtube to be honest is click through rate and watch time those are the two most important things in that analytics right now so you know and and that'll change probably at some point when yeah. it doesn't start working out for them or they find that they're losing too many people they'll change it again that's just the way they are it's you know people are constantly but, trying to adapt and it's a it's a big source of stress for people i mean especially if you're i think if you're on there as a massive youtuber yeah and totally. that's the well, source of I've, your income i've heard it from a bunch of big youtubers like what the hell is happening with my views right? yeah when ryan atwood completely like breaking down and having to take a break from youtube there as well right like the stress of constantly putting it out there it's like a black void essentially sometimes but well that's yeah i don't know how to uh, yeah. explain it really youtube is uh it's a fun place if it it's working i guess yeah if it's not working then it becomes this kind of i don't know like yeah. that's why i like live now instead of the uploading for some reason it just i the instant gratification i get from it i guess yeah Whereas the videos, I don't feel like I, you get really anything out of it anymore. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the safest space uh, to be on YouTube as any person is doing what you want to do uh, and catering to yourself first. <laughs> yeah. Which, which sounds, which sounds kind of weird. Like, I mean, 
you know, this whole podcast is really, it caters to me and Lloyd. We sit down, we talk. I like to talk. I like to sit down and talk with people. We just happen to record it and put it on the internet. I mean, well, and that's why I if like you the, watch it fantastic, you know, that's good. That's and if it gains popularity, too, yeah. great. But, you know, to the, to the same extent, you know, you and I would sit down and we would have a conversation at Joey's over beers or whatever. We would do this anyway. Yeah, right? for so, sure. I mean, that's what I mean. It's catering, you know, sort of to myself or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's, you know. It makes it a lot easier to just well i that's my whole like vibe on line is just be chill whenever yeah, yeah. but i i think what's happening is that there's a, definitely a blurred line between you know youtube and sort of commercial television right i mean it's kind of you know people are looking to step up to create basically a commercial program that's you know it's it's like running a pilot you know you you know, guys that ran pilots in the past on TV, you would basically, you know, film your pilot, <laughs> send it to the network and they would either take it or not. And you lose the money, whatever you did, hire actors, you know, well, film, YouTube, all that you just kind go, of stuff. You go live, right? You same put it thing. Up. You, you just upload it. Same thing. And if people like it, great. You know, you could, you could go out, probably get a bunch of red cameras, do all that kind of stuff, hire a bunch of actors, get a script, don't all that kind of stuff. That anymore. Yeah. Like what, well, but like, my daughter watches a ton of like kid YouTubers and stuff like Ryan toys review, yeah. the biggest YouTuber I think in the world is that kid. Right. And like to see them go from it, all these big YouTubers always start off with mansions and then just bit, you know, move into bigger mansions with better pools and yeah. stuff. Right. But, uh, now they have like a warehouse with a staff and like another channel that just pumps out videos. Right. Like, and that's going to be scary. Time. That's going to be scary Insanity. when things like, the algorithm screws you over and you lose, you know, I've seen channels that lose like three, four million views a month. You know, that's gotta be concerning that's, when you lose that. Like well, I can't even relate to what that is, but yeah, well, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, uh, like I'm, I, I don't know, like how do we as like a collective in Calgary, like all help each other grow. Cause we're all like underneath the, whatever's happening of YouTube I, once you hit like the snowball effect or whatever, right. like I, I'm trying to like help everyone that wants to grow, grow I mean, with me. Essentially. Everybody. But, I mean, what my, my process is, this is honestly how I operate. I go, if I see it, for example, posted in the Facebook page, I will go watch it. Yeah, for sure. Typically I will throw it a like, or I will leave a comment or I try to do, you know, that, but I'll do that. At, at very least you get a view out of me, you know, Usually some interaction, all that kind of stuff. For not sure. all the time, but you know, you know what I mean. And, and, and as well, to be honest, like I mean, if it's not you know somewhat reciprocated, like if I'm just leaving comments and you're not responding to them, or you know you don't pop over, take a look, and say, hey, oh, that was a cool whatever, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's kind of like I, I've invested too much time in you at For that sure. point, right? But you, I'll probably still watch. Ultimately, I pretty much watch everybody's stuff um, because I have that little to do in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, time is is the thing sometimes, right? Yeah. Like trying to get well, and I like that they switched it from a weekly playlist to like a monthly because yeah. I, I like I don't even remember that the playlists are there, and I always forget right. to submit to them. So yeah. to get like, oh, I really want to boost with this one video for the yeah. month. It's like uh, that's the one I want to put. Right? Yeah. I don't know. There's a few. I think there's a few things that we could all come up with for yeah. the Calgary community if if there's more interest, right? Like, yeah. I, there's I people, mean, people there. that, you know, if, if you want to build, let's build like that's kind of how I look at it. Let's let's do something. Let's let's all build together. Let's grow together. I mean, if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Like, I mean, that's just kind of <laughs> kind of how it is. Well, right? And like I'm trying to use um, Instagram because people are coming in from I've been going live on there a lot as yeah. well. They're coming in from there to the live streams as well. And then I'm like, OK, well, I'll do shout outs on my Instagram. Yeah if we win, which it happened the other day and then yeah. I put out like pictures, whatever. I don't know. I'm trying like to help the Fortnite community grow or right, whatever, right. whatever, whoever's playing with me, they're helping me out as well. Right. Yeah, so I want to, absolutely. Wanna, yeah. yeah. Like it, they, they, they don't realize it, yeah. but they, actually and that's a good really thing that you're doing. I mean, you're developing a community around yourself, which is extremely helpful for growth. Yeah. You know, if you have a community going, that's, you know, community is going to help everybody kind of grow for so. sure. But essentially, that's all we have time for this week. So thanks for, for coming in and sitting down with us and chit-chatting and all that kind of good I, stuff. I would have been just talking to you on like Facebook chat or something about yeah. this. <laughs> hey, man, how's it going? <laughs> there you go. So everybody can find you where? Uh, just search Josh WRB absolutely anywhere. Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, 
Instagram, all, all Josh WRB. There you go. So Josh WRB, we will throw all those links below. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. And until next week, I'm JD. I'm Josh. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>